in the last class we were discussing about the characteristic future of atmosphere and its related weather and climate in this class today we like to discuss some of the important weather elements because these are born from the atmosphere let us discuss something on our rainfall why i say our rainfall without water there is no life so rainfall is very very important you know already what is hydrological cycle water gets evaporated from the ocean surface all water bodies it also gets uh, transpired through plant system goes as uh, evapor transpiration and stays in the atmosphere as water vapor normally they live in the atmosphere up to 10 days for a single water vapor molecule they stay for 10 days then gets condensed and falls as precipitation so one among the precipitation is your rainfall so one among the precipitation is your rainfall other than that you have drizzle you have snow you have sleet and you have hail also these are all some forms of precipitation in temperate countries you get snow in tropical situation you get rainfall because of the lapse rate that is being operated at the lower part of the atmosphere without rainfall there is no life in the earth that is already understood normally rainfall is being reported for the past 24 hours for example today the rainfall is being recorded by 8:30 am it is said to be 20 mm means in the past 24 hours there was rainfall up to this quantity this is a very very important next we move to some theories i say rainfall you must understand some basic aspects of rainfall rainfall is from both warm clouds as well as your cold clouds accordingly it is being defined by two authors one is the rainfall from cold clouds this is proposed by this theory is proposed by bergeron he is from norway he has proposed bergeron ice crystal theory for cold clouds and another one is collision theory proposed by brown from australia this is for warm clouds now let, let me say simply about your bergeron ice crystal theory there is a cloud the temperature goes below 0 degree centigrade all water gets freezed into ice crystals except a certain portion we call it as super cooled water it stays as a super cooled water not as a ice crystals if you examine the saturation vapor pressure between these two ice crystal and uh, this super cooled water the pressure is more with super cooled water as compared to your ice crystals what happens there is a sublimation process physical process sudden change from one skipping one stage the vapor goes as a ice crystal and falls over the existing ice crystals and because of the weight and the gravitational force it comes as a your rainfall this is for cold clouds in respect of the warm clouds the process is coalescence and collision proposed by brown of australia where in the temperature does not go below 7 degree centigrade that is some warmness is there here small cloud droplets gets collided and becoming a biggest particle of the cloud because of the thickness of the clouds and the presence of abundant moisture in the clouds there is always vertical agitation the bottom goes to the top top comes to both it's like a machinery process by that the rain cloud droplets becomes very bigger 
and the falls as a rainfall at a later stage with your gravitational force as well as your weight. These are all some theories proposed you must understand. Now coming to the process, theory is something different from the process. What are those processes? For every season, the rain occurs through different process. For example, during summer, there was there is convective process because of the solar radiation. The land gets heated. The air above the land also gets heated. It loses a density and it gets ascent, goes to the atmosphere and through a diabetic cooling process, you get rainfall. Another process is orographic rainfall process. This occurs during monsoon season, especially during south coast monsoon season of India, wherein the trade winds, they travel over uh, ocean, take enough moisture, and this warm and uh, moist water, air, they hit on mountain. As a result, the air goes up, and through air diabetic cooling, you get uh, rainfall. There is warm frontal rainfall also. This occurs during cold weather period, wherein Already there is cold air mass exists. Warm air mass comes from somewhere and sits over the your cold air mass and grows like that over addition by addition and you get rainfall. In the case of the cold frontal rainfall, what happens is the already the warm air sits over the cold air mass because of natural phenomenon. The cold air mass sits away leaving the warm air mass in the agitation mode. In addition, the cold air mass pushes the warm air upper side and uh, through a diabetic cooling, you get uh, rainfall. And the another one is rain with cyclonic. This is very, very common during northeast monsoon season of India. There is a dense, extensive air mass in the atmosphere which has converging effect, energy conversion. This moves up towards the atmosphere and uh, through a diabetic cooling, again you get rainfall. Cyclone process is something different. You get a suddenly depression in the, your atmospheric pressure. Suppose there is a 980 millibar of your portion earth. Suddenly there is a drop in the atmospheric pressure, 978, 975 then you get this uh, process of uh, rainfall. This is very, very important. So these are all process and it varies with uh, season. Somebody says that, is there any rule that same rainfall process occurs uh, throughout the year? I think it is not so. It gets varied with uh, season. Then coming to the uh, the annual rainfall of important countries, this is very, very important to understand the spatial and the temporal dimension of the rainfall. This is very important. I can say because of the geographical position of a particular area, that I say latitude and longitude, the climate or the weather also gets uh, changed. Now you see, in the case of um, your uh, Turkey, Asia, the minimum rainfall 360 millimeter. And the maximum could be seen in the South America bottommost layer, it is around 3,000 millimeter. Where is 360, where is 3,000 millimeter. Similarly, if you take your, uh, our India as a case, in Jai Salmer, the annual rainfall is 100 millimeter only, annual 100 millimeter. So, how to express? So, rainfall gets varied, the process also gets varied, the theories also get varied the spatial and the temporal dimension also gets varied. Now some facts I want to say about rainfall. What would be the size of the rainfall? The droplet size must be more than 0 0.5 millimeter. People must understand how to call a day as a rainy day or a dry day. If the rainfall is more than 2.5 millimeter, then we call it as a rainfall day. Otherwise, the rainfall is lesser than 2.5 millimeter means it gets evaporated as a evaporation because daily a minimum of 3 millimeter is being goes as evaporation. So lesser than rainfall 2.5 millimeter 
does not make a day as a rainfall day. Then uh, coming to the intensity of the rainfall, this is also very, very important. Here you can see light rain. There are two subtypes, light rain, very light rain and one moderate and the three heavy, rather heavy, heavy and very heavy. This is again based on what is the scale, is it per hour or per day. I can say that you can call it as per day or per day. When rain starts and completes by one hour in a particular day, then it can say it is a one hour scale. Or in a day, it goes on drizzling, 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 then you call it a per day. So, if the rainfall is more than 12.5 centimeter, that is 125 millimeter, then we call it as a very heavy rainfall. Heavy means the classification is here, 6.5 to 12.5 centimeter, rather heavy. Then moderate, this is always moderation is very, very important, moderate rainfall. Here I like to say one thing. In the case of European countries, the rainfall is 2 mm per day. If you come to countries country like India, the rainfall is 20 mm per day. See, this is due to some variations. In the temperate countries, the rainfall process is mainly due to cold frontal rain or warm frontal rain. But in respect of our uh, Indian condition, you have cyclonic uh, storm, you have orographic rain. That's why the rainfall quantity gets uh, varied. Then why rainfall is very important to crops, not only to crops, but also to all human cattle and everything, every life. We call in agriculture crop production effective rainfall. This is nothing but the amount of uh, moisture or the amount of rainfall that gets infiltrated into the soil profile and the stored as soil moisture. This soil moisture is going to be used by the crop as a for transpiration for its growth and multiplication and also giving yield. So effective rainfall is very, very important. We say that 60% of the rainfall received to be the effective rainfall in the case of not considering the antecedent soil moisture. Suppose today's rainfall is 100 millimeter, the effective rainfall is 60 millimeter. In the case of the drain and agriculture, the entire crop production depends upon your rainfall. If you take, for example, India, 44% of total annual production comes from the drain and agriculture, thus indicating the importance of rainfall for drain and agriculture, whether it may be in India or Australia or any other country. The other important aspect of rainfall is irrigated agriculture. Whenever rain falls on your land, the water goes inside the soil profile as infiltration and it reaches the deeper layer and uh, getting stored as uh, groundwater. That groundwater is being used for your uh, irrigated agriculture. So irrigated agriculture is very, very important because here the reduction, risk reduction is very, very important as compared to your dry land agriculture. Then crop water requirement, this is very, very important. You have your food requirement per day, calories 2,200 to 2,500 calories per day your requirement. Like that, plant also, crop also requires uh, water for its growth. That is being uh, discussed in the next uh, slide. Now you can see, have taken the rice crop, it's evapotranspiration. The water loss from the soil goes as 1,200 to 1,400 millimeter, either as evaporation or like your transpiration through the plant process. So uh, we have given a different uh, example for this crop, temperate crop is given, tropical crops are given, you kindly see all those things. So here one interesting point is, um, Whenever the evapotranspiration is more, the yield also would be more. For example, you see rice, the evapotranspiration is, goes up to 1,400 millimeter and the yield is 5 tonnes per hectare. If you come to pulses on the right side, its ET is 250 to 300 millimeter, the yield also 200 to 300 kg per hectare. So in the absence of the ET, the yield also will be getting reduced, indicating that rainfall is mostly required for uh, crop production if you want to sustain or increase the, your grain yield from the crops. 
Now let me see what are the instruments let us use to measure the your um, the rainfall. Internationally, the rain is to be measured by three GMT. For India, plus uh, five point thirty hours, it becomes eight thirty a.m. in the morning. So, for having an international comparison, we have to record rainfall by three GMT in all the countries. There is one ordinary rain gauge. It is has to be man uh, managed by the manually, and one is self-recording rain gauge. It is being operated by uh, through a uh, uh, battery or uh, your um, like a clock. Then a dipping bucket, this is automatic sensor uh, equipments being fitted with your automatic weather station. So these are the some things that I like to discuss on the rainfall for today's class. Thank you very much.